Hello and welcome to episode 429 of the Bruce Wagner Show. I'm so glad you can join us. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what this show is all about. We're in the process of transitioning from format, I'll call it format A to format B. So let me define those. Format A is simply sort of a reality show about a guy who is trying to wanting to start a web TV chat show. This guy right here, me. And um, what is involved in starting your own web TV show, which I'm hoping will be of um, great benefit to people because I know a lot of people are interested in doing this. You know, podcasting, uh, well, before that, blogging was all the rage. And then um, podcasting became very popular. And now a lot of people are getting into... Um, you know, wanting to do their own little web TV show. Audio is really easy because it's kind of like, you know, you, write, you use the right software, like free software like Audacity, and it works just like almost like an old-fashioned cassette recorder. You just, um, you know, press record and start talking. You just have a little desktop microphone, which you can get on, you know, the clearance rack for $2, you know, plug it into your PC, press record, and boom, you, uh, you have a podcast pretty much. I mean, they're you know, there's a little bit more to it. You have to upload it to the right place, and you know, but there are there's so many services now. If you just go to Google and put in podcast, there's a million tutorials of super super easy ways to do that. In fact, one of these days we'll talk about that. We'll do a how to on how to do an audio podcast. It's very simple. Um, but anyway, <coughs> this is about people who want to do a web TV chat show, like this one. Okay, uh, my name is Bruce Wagner, obviously, and um, I. Previously, on, on episodes of this show, we've talked about the steps that I've taken to so far to create this show. So format A, like I was saying, is um, a guy, just a guy, me, who wants to start a web TV chat show and kind of a reality show, obviously very casual, just telling you the steps I've gone through. I'm not the expert who's going to teach you how to create your own web TV show although that may happen along the way, but you are going to teach me how to create an interesting web TV chat show. And in the process, we're both going to learn. It's going to be a very synergistic process. If you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. Go to T-W-I-T-T-E-R dot com slash Bruce Wagner and uh, click follow. Follow me on Twitter and we'll connect that way. You can send me at replies directly on Twitter. Again, it's Bruce Wagner, all one word, twitter.com slash Bruce Wagner. You can also go to brucewagner.com and hit contact there and contact me through that. Or obviously just email me, bruce at brucewagner.com. Very easy to remember. But give me your feedback. Tell me what you think. Give me your thoughts because your thoughts and ideas and information will be the fuel that fuels this whole process. What we're okay, so that's format A is basically um, this just a very casual reality show. Me telling you the steps I've taken to create a web TV chat show, okay, and what's working, what's not, what's things uh, maybe uh, difficulties, obstacles I've run into. Um, you will be able to help me by correcting me, telling me, giving me ideas or suggestions or things to try that I, if we haven't already. And uh, meanwhile, I'll tell you the problems I've run into and give you ideas and feedback too about look out for this or whatever and so on. So we'll, we'll get into that more. And then format B is the actual show. So the end result of this process of going through this process of getting a web TV go show going will end up in a quality web TV show. That's the whole idea. So... <coughs> Pardon me. Um, that's what I mean by we're going to go through a kind of a casual transition from format A to format B. Format A being uh, how to create a web TV show. Format B is the actual format of the show. All right. So the let's let's talk about that a little bit. The thing that I want to do with this show uh, that's I think pretty unique. I don't think anybody has actually done all five of these things together. E many people have done one or two or three, but I don't know of anybody so far who's actually done all five. Th so it's pretty aggressive undertaking that, that I'm taking on. The five really interesting things about it are this. W number one is that it's broadcast live. 
we use Ustream, UstreamTV.com, to broadcast this show live every day, six days a week, Monday through Saturday at noon Eastern Time. That's noon New York Time. You can also go to BruceWagner.com and you can click the link to see what time that is in your city. So it's like 9 a.m. on the West Coast and 12 noon Eastern Time every day, Monday through Saturday. So we're broadcasting it live, which means that not only you can watch it live, which isn't fun, but also the chat room uh, is interactive. So while we're actually taping the show, you can give us feedback live right there. I'm sitting here looking at the chat room so I can see what you're saying, what you're typing. And myself, guest co-hosts, panelists, and guests, even celebrity guest interviews that we're doing, you'll be able to ask questions in real time live right there through that chat room. And we will read every message that comes in through the chat room. So that's really cool. It gives us like a live audience, like a live, just like a live studio audience, but obviously, you know, over the internet. So uh, it's very cool. I mean, even a talk show like Oprah, she has a live audience, but not every single person is sitting there typing in their questions during the show. So it's very powerful. All right. So that's number one. Number two is obviously on demand um, via a full length one hour segments on YouTube. YouTube, obviously, super popular. Everyone knows how to use YouTube probably as many people know how to use YouTube as email. So, and we have a, a special account um, that is a director's account which allows us to do a full one hour, up to one hour segments on YouTube, which is very cool. So obviously the vast majority of people will be watching it on demand, which means whenever they want, they can just go there and press play. So that's cool. You go to brucewagner.com, click watch our show now, and boom, you're watching it on the YouTube channel. Then the third thing is um, as an iTunes podcast in two forms, actually. A video podcast where you see, a lot, obviously, live video. I mean, not live video, but video on demand. You watch it whenever you want. But you subscribe as a podcast, so every time we uh, broadcast a new show, you'll automatically download it to your uh, MP3 or MP4, whatever video podcast player you have, your device, or even your computer. You can just watch it on your computer. But audio... Uh, I mean a video version and also an audio only version so if you just have an audio iPod or mp3 player you'll be able to get an mp3 so that you can actually just listen to the show as an mp3 audio only you won't get the video of course but um, you'll be able to enjoy the show you know in your commute or when you're working out or whatever whenever it is that you normally listen to podcasts or audio so as a podcast audio and video versions is number three number four is very unique um, only a few people are doing it that I know of, but more and more. And that is um, what we call live guest co-hosts or panelists and um, even celebrity guests via Skype. Um, and what we're doing, as you can see, this big screen behind me is actually um, just a c computer, but we're using a special switch that switches among four different computers. So we can have guests via Skype have one PC dedicated to Skype only, or actually four PCs dedicated to Skype only, so that we can have four complete different Skype computers running and a switch that switches the person who's speaking up on the big screen. So we can hear all four talking at the same time. Hopefully they're not talking at the same time. Um, but whoever's speaking, I can press a button and put them up here on the big screen. So um, Leo Laporte calls this um, Skyposaurus, but uh, whatever. It's it's um, the idea is that we and we've tested this. It works brilliantly. You can see them like bigger than me. This face of this person who could be sitting in Pattaya, Thailand, or Los Angeles, or you know Manchester, England, or whatever. Sydney, Australia. It doesn't matter where they are. They could be anywhere on the globe. Plus. Of course, you notice there's a seat right here. So if, if somebody happens to be you know, living in New York City or passing through New York City, which who doesn't, sooner or later, everybody passes through New York City, um, they can actually come here to our studio live and sit here and chat with me face to face. So we have lots of options. We can have at least one person right here in the studio with me and up to four people on Skype right here from anywhere in the planet. If you've got a laptop with a webcam, boom, that's all you need. So and an internet connection, of course. So again, number one, broadcasting live on Ustream. Number two, on demand, full length on YouTube. Number three, uh, as a video and or audio only podcast on iTunes. And number five, live guests via Skype. I'm sorry, that's number four, is live, <laughs> live guests via Skype from anywhere in the world, up to four that we can switch. And then the fifth thing that makes it unique is probably the most profound, and that is a very ambitious schedule of doing this show daily, six days a week. 
at 12 noon, up you know up to an hour, 40 minutes to an hour maximum, um, every single day, Monday through Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time, New York time. A six day a week schedule is very intense. So, and there are a lot of issues that go along with that, even technical issues, because in order, I mean, to do it daily means that everything you do has to be done daily. And if it, if it can't be done super fast, it's just not going to get done and you're going to get behind, which is always a challenge when you're on a strict schedule like that, especially when you have basically, like I say, a staff of one and a budget of zero. We're doing this on a shoestring because I want, well, <laughs> because that's what we have. That's the resources we have. And it's probably the resources that many of you have. You really don't have much money and uh, you don't have a staff you know a lot of obviously a lot of great TV talk shows are on regular TV but they have armies of production people I'm sure Oprah's uh, Harpo has you know tens if not um, dozens of production teams of people so each show is produced by a different co-producer or whatever assistant producer and a team of people under them they li literally have armies of people who produce these things and it all falls under Oprah's name but you know <laughs> she oversees everything I'm sure but you know obviously th she has an army of people working on it and it's not just Oprah I mean every show is like that I'm sure like The View and Ellen and so on so obviously you probably don't have that and I don't either so we have to deal with what we have so on a daily schedule it's everything has to be really really efficient the good thing is the wonderful thing is that um, we have the internet and we have technology and what used to cost ten million dollars you know a year or two ago you could get for ten thousand dollars you know today you could probably get for a thousand dollars it's getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper like every single day so it's fantastic that we have these opportunities all right so let's get down to um, to today here's where we where we stand with the show um, yesterday we had Daniel Diaz on as um, a guest co-host I'm calling panelist he's actually here in New York so he sat here right here next to me in New York New York which worked really well we're doing um, we have decided we're going to take the six major topic categories and divide them up so that one is on each day which will help us with scheduling panelists for discussions uh, so that people will be comfortable discussing the categories that they're really interested in or knowledgeable about or so forth. So again, Mondays will be about money, personal finance, bargain shopping, anything to do about money, personal finance, Sus think Susan Norman, Robert Kiyosaki, that kind of thing. Uh, and also bargain shopping with Dr. Frugal, Ed, my partner. And, the, and Tuesdays will be body, which means health, fitness, nutrition, health related issues, whether it's epidemics like obesity and diabetes and so on, anything, uh, swine flu, whatever. Wednesdays is love, which it happens to be today, but again, we're transitioning from format A to format B. We don't have a panelist set up for today yet scheduled, so we're talking trend, uh, format A today. Uh, but l uh, love is about dating, relationships, uh, sex, um, anything to do with that, you know, boyfriend cheating issues, um, Finding Mr. Right, all those sorts of things. Fun. Okay, Thursday is personal technology. My take on personal technology is personal technology made easy. So the very, very best of the very newest, latest, greatest technology, but it has to be as easy to use as an elevator or it's useless. It has to be um, efficient and effective and easy for the average person to use not just more buttons for the sake of more buttons okay and then Friday is celebrity so that would be the day that we would try to do our celebrity interviews um, discussing celebrities and things as well but we're n it's not going to be celebrity gossip more like actual interviews of celebrities and then Saturday is spirit which is about um, all spirituality not religion per se but just anything that involves global enlightenment like for example the green movement you know protecting the environment um, anything that has like global implications global issues um, anything that expresses spirituality or the oneness of all of us which I think the the whole world is kind of ready for this type of topic it used to be kind of a taboo because religion and politics were you know absolute no-nos you know <laughs> you bring those up at a party and look out you know uh, but now spirituality I think the world is kind of ready for some of these issues that we realize that we really are one big village called earth and we really are um, very much connected if not com absolutely one whatever it is your beliefs are 
All right, so that's Saturday. So those are the six major topic categories, one for each day of the week. And then we're also going to be uh, doing, Ed, my partner, is going to be doing a Spanish language show. His first language is Spanish. So he's going to be doing sort of sort of a Spanish language edition or Spanish language version of this show, you might say. He'll take, I mean, it'll be his own unique show, but he'll take a lot of the ideas and things that we talk about during the week on this show and do his own in Spanish language. And it'll be different. It'll be called El Show de Edward Gell. At, or in Spanish, they'll say El Show de Edward Hell. They pronounce G-E-L. His last name is Hell. But in uh, English, we pronounce it Gell. Anyway, and that'll be at edwardgell.com. And this one is at brucewagner.com. All right, so <coughs> that's that's where we stand. Now, um, let's see. Some of the things... Okay, let's talk about the technical issues that we've encountered so far. What we're using is... Uh, I've simply set up, as you can see, we, I took our flat screen TV, plugged it into a computer, and it's a monitor. All the, new t all the new TVs really are just big computer monitors, in fact. They have all different sorts of video inputs. And this one, you set, um, you set the input to, they call it RGB, and you plug in the uh, VGA cable, and boom, it's just a great big PC monitor. You can buy a splitter... Um, I think it's called uh, Giga something at Radio Shack's sells a VGA splitter so that you can actually leave your computer monitor plugged in and have two VGA outputs, one for the monitor and one for the big, big monitor. <laughs> in other words, like in a sense, just two monitors showing the same thing. Okay, That's how we get that. All right. Um, then the next step is, um, well, of course, we have a camera. We just use, uh, you can buy a simple $299 uh, consumer camcorder, nothing fancy. In fact, we're not even using the camera for recording. We're only using it as a camera. So really, literally, you can get a $200, $300 maximum, very decent camera. The reason I say uh, a low price camera is because I'm not talking about a webcam now. I'm talking about a camcorder, like you would record video at a birthday party or something, um, and a tripod. Um, just a cheap, pr just whatever, just a basic tripod that works. The reason um, I say don't go any higher end on a camera, and don't get HD and all that fancy stuff for this purpose, is because it's not necessary. When you're going to encode it immediately into a, a tightly compressed file format, and it's going to be streaming on the web and downloading to people's iPods and YouTube and all that. So it's going to end up very small screen and very highly compressed anyway. So, you know, to have a fancy camera that with, you know, HD and all that, the, the internet's not ready for that yet. So your quality is not is probably not even going to be noticeable. The difference in quality is not even going to be noticeable. All right. So get a low-end camcorder, put it on a, on a tripod, make sure it has uh, FireWire or what do they call it, 1390, what is it, 1399 or something, FireWire, basically. Ask for a FireWire out, put a FireWire cable on it, make sure your PC can accept FireWire input, and then if you have a, you need a dedicated Windows computer that will run um, this free program from Adobe called Adobe Flash Media Encoder, which is all available on Ustream. If you go to just Google Ustream, it's the letter U, S-T-R-E-A-M, and the actual site is U, S-T-R-E-A-M-T-V.com. Ustream TV. No, sorry, it's Ustream.TV. My mistake. U, the letter U, S-T-R-E-A-M dot TV. Go there. And um, when you set up, you know, to broadcast and all that, there's a button that says broadcast in higher resolution or something. And that will take you to the how-to thing of where to download this free program from Adobe called Adobe Flash Media Encoder. Highly recommend that because the video quality will be so much better on the live broadcast on Ustream. But it also, there's an option on the program to save the Flash file to your hard drive at the same time you're broadcasting. And that's what we're using because it's so unbelievably easy. The camcorder is not even recording. It's just in camera mode, but it's not recording. It's streaming out the FireWire into this uh, Windows PC running Adobe Flash Media Encoder. And then I've got that set to broadcast out to Ustream, which we're broadcasting live. And it's also saving an FLV flash file to the hard drive at the same time. So it's brilliant. It's super, super easy. There's just nothing else to do. All right. Then, um, let's see, what else? We'll get back to... Um, the <coughs> I'm using a, a KVM switch, they call it. It's KVM stands for Keyboard Video 
monitor, I guess, key, no, keyboard video mouse, I suppose is what that means. KBM switch. Anyway, it's an IO, um, what is it called? Um, IO gear. IO gear four point, four port, IO gear four port KBM switch, which I just ordered online, buy.com or something. And um, it works really, really well. It also, it, it switches your keyboard, mouse, and audio and monitor um, from four different PCs onto one output. Now, the purpose of this is very simple. I have my best speaker system, the best amplified you know, PC speaker system you have, and then you have your big, big TV, which is just a big monitor, right? And this is what they call the console, all right? So if you imagine now, I have another separate USB keyboard, and I may have four, up to four PCs, one, two, three, or four PCs connected to this thing, so we'll call them A, B, C, D. Each of these PCs run Skype separately. Skype really is extremely CPU intensive. People think that it's really about bandwidth, which it is, but it's even more about the CPU. You, can't, you really don't want to run other programs on the same computer while you're running Skype for a video call, by the way. So each PC of these four PCs will be completely dedicated to doing nothing but a Skype video call. That's it, okay? and only receiving video, not sending video, just receiving the video and the audio from the, the person, our guest, or guest co-host, panelist, whatever, okay? So imagine that, there's PC A, B, C, D, right? And we'll say there's four different people on each of those Skype calls, you know, Alex, Brenda, Charlie, and David, right? So on this keyboard console, I can control, we can actually hear all four of those people speaking. If they all spoke at the same time, we'd hear them all. But if I hear that Brenda's talking, I hit B, and boom, Brenda's up here, bigger than life. And then Charlie starts speaking, I hit C, Charlie's up here. Then David interjects, I hit D, there's David. You see what I mean? So it's really brilliant. We can have four people up here, one here. We can really have a very interesting discussions on all these various topics. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so that's, I'm using a KVM switch. Really cool. If you have any suggestions or ideas or whatever, feedback, be sure and send them to me. Bruce at BruceWagner.com is my email address or on Twitter, just Bruce Wagner, all one word. Um, be really happy to hear from you about that. Let's see, what else? Um, okay, then let's talk about the video editing. After we finish the show, okay, you end up with this FLV file that comes out of Adobe Flash Media Encoder. Um, an FLV is um, an extension, but it's basically a flash encoded file, it's, and which means it's already compressed. It's absolutely ready for broadcast on YouTube, for example. So I can take that FLV file and I can just upload it directly to YouTube. Now what I've been doing is I've been setting it up to record and then starting the broadcast and then later at some point starting the show thinking that, well, what I'll do is I'll take the file in and then edit it, you know, edit a little bit, tweak it, just cut off, basically just cut off the beginning and the end. And let me explain why um, my, I'll explain my thinking throughout this whole process so you understand where I'm coming from, because you might have better ideas than me and I would sure love to hear them. Uh, and whatever the best idea we come up with, we'll obviously implement it and then we'll share it with the rest of the world. It's all about giving. By the way, let me stop for a second. I want to tell you one thing. This is my mission statement, my personal mission statement, what this is all about. My personal mission statement is that I want, my mission is to help as many people as possible, and I'm not talking about a few or tens or hundreds or thousands, I'm talking about masses, as many people as possible. My mission is to help as many people as possible in the most profound ways possible. So that's what this is all about. That's the purpose of a show. I figure broadcasting is an awesome way to, to reach masses of audience, masses of people, and hopefully not just reach them, not sell them anything, but teach them, help them in whatever way possible, but in the most profound and important ways. And it's not me teaching you, it's facilitating it. So that's the whole idea behind having expert guests. I mean, not celebrities, but not just celebrities, but also experts. You know, they may be authors or whatever, um, whatever experts on all these different topics that we interview, and also panelists, where we discuss really, really important topics, and hopefully the audience will go away with a better understanding of something or more knowledge, something that they can apply in their life that will actually benefit and help them. So that's the purpose. That's my mission statement, just for the record. All right. So back to this. Um, 
back to the technology. So the all right. The reason that I chose to do a format of a daily show, a lot of people want to know, why did you decide to do this every day? That sounds difficult, especially starting out. Why don't you just do it once a year, once a month, once a week, whatever? And I, the w here's the way I look at it. It might be just me. It might be human psychology in general. It might just be my own psychology. I don't know. But the way I look at it is, it's kind of like a fitness program. When I start a fitness program, I have to do it every day. To me, n really, it's like 90% of it is just showing up. I think Mark Twain said something like that. 80% of the success is just showing up. But I think it's like 90%, really. If you make a commitment to be at the gym at a certain time and meet people there, if you have, especially if you're meeting people there, because you have a commitment that you're there, you know, it almost doesn't even matter what your workout looks like. You know, it, as long as you do something, it's better than doing nothing. So just showing up and doing what little you can, even if you can barely do anything, the point is that every single day you do a little bit better than you did the day before and showing up every day. So showing up every day and every day trying to do just a little bit better than you did the day before, I think that is the secret. That's how I view doing a show like this. Um, I'm not saying that doing a daily show is the answer for everybody, but for me it is. I, have a, I feel like I have a lot to say, and I have a, a lot of topics to cover, a lot of guests to interview, a lot of really cool discussions to have. So I want to I do it daily. I want to do at least an hour a day. Um, I know that um, one of the major obstacles that people have about doing any kind of a web show is getting in front of the camera because I'm going to look like an idiot. People are going to be judging me. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, Ed was telling me that, you know, when he was in at university and, and sitting down to do an oral exam that, you know, you get all these, you get butterflies and you get all tense. And I told him, I said, I, before I hit start, I always get like nervous and I start to sweat and I, I'm like, I don't know why. It's like, I've already made a fool of myself. <laughs> I mean, what do I have to be? I'm like, so think in my mind, like, uh, logically, analytically, that I have nothing to be afraid of. I'm, you know, <laughs> I've already kind of made a fool of myself, and I don't really care. I'm kind of beyond that. So intellectually, I'm beyond that. But it doesn't matter. It's a very human thing. It's like the number one fear they say that human beings have is fear of public speaking. And this, what this is. I mean, nothing is more like public speaking than being on camera. Because you don't know if six thousand, sixty thousand, six million people could eventually watch this. Who knows? So. Um, and those people, you know, pe we know people are judgmental. They're going to criticize. The, they're going to criticize your hair. They're going to criticize anything, everything. And um, you're really putting yourself out there when you're speaking on camera. And we all know that. Some people have absolutely no fear, but a lot, most people do have fear. So that's a real hurdle to overcome. And it's almost, to me, it's almost a spiritual thing to know that. Look, um, if I, I feel that if what I'm doing, which kind of ties back to my mission statement, if what I'm doing is good and it's in alignment with good or God or the universe or whatever you want to think of it, however, whatever terms you want to think about it, if it's in alignment with what is good and what is right, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. And I'm not really worried about what anybody thinks about me or judges me or whatever. I really couldn't care less. <laughs> you know, I, I want to always improve. As long I want to improve in being more effective in my mission, but I'm not concerned about pleasing people other than that. Um, so, anyway. Once you get past that, then, you know, you can, I think you can do it without fear. All right. So the idea behind doing six days a week, as I said, is the content, the quality of the content, and just showing up. If I do it every single day, I figure today will be just slightly better than yesterday's show, and yesterday's show was slightly better than the day before, and so on and so on. And like anything else, practice makes perfect. If you do something every single day you will improve no matter what it is so that's my take on it if you wait <laughs> the flip side if you wait until you think everything is perfect you've got an absolutely perfect show you're not really doing a uh, a ch like a talk show you're really doing like a movie if you're going to make a movie yeah it could take a year if you make absolutely everything perfect it might take a year and it might never even be made it's kind of like having a baby. If, if everybody waited until absolutely everything was perfect to have a baby, there would be no reproduction going on. We wouldn't have any children in this, in this world. So I really think that, you know, although it seems clumsy and awkward, accidents are a good thing. And <laughs> we wouldn't be here, half of us, if it wasn't for accidents in that regard. So just showing up, doing it, 
don't be afraid of making a fool of yourself. Do it every single day and get better at it every day. That's my my um, philosophy. I, I believe that's my strategy. Put it that way. All right. Not for everybody, but that's mine. Um, so now, having decided that, we decided that we're going to do it every single day, six days a week. Then that's kind of, like I said, that's one of the five things that makes this really unique. The live streaming, the on-demand on YouTube, the on-demand as a podcast on iTunes, um, the Skype guests live from all over the world and in person, and doing it daily six days a week are what really makes this unique. The fact that we're doing all six of those in one show. I don't know anybody else who's doing that. Maybe there is, but I don't know about them. Um, If so, let me know. I'd be interested. Meanwhile, having a daily schedule means that you have to be able to do everything really fast. With a staff of one, a budget of zero, that means really fast. So my original idea was, okay, no editing. (laughs) We don't have any, we cannot afford editing because if we put the video into a video editor, it takes a lot of time. No matter how good you are, which I'm not, I mean, I'm not a a professional video editor by any means. I know how to, you know, tinker around with it and I can, I've done lots of different effects and things and whatever, video editing. And that's fine, once again, if you're doing one project for one special thing and you have plenty of time on your hands. But to do it every 24 hours to edit it again, my thought was, no, no video editing. So, um, I was originally going to, like I said, the way this um, Flash Media Encoder works, you press start, it starts recording it to the disk, and then yet there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven extra clicks you've got to do to get it broadcasting live on Ustream. So I thought, once it's broadcasting live on Ustream, then I'll do, I'll do the intro. Hello and welcome to the Bruce Wagner Show episode, blah, blah, blah. So that way, all I have to do, is really no editing, I just have to trim the beginning off and the end off. Okay, that was my idea. Okay, so that sounds easy enough, but um, what I discovered is that even when I do that, I end up with this FLV file, I bring it over into my other computer, which I'm running Ubuntu Linux, and I'm running, for the video editor, I'm running Kino, and, but basically all video editors work very similarly, but I brought it in, and it started out as, you know, 150 megabyte FLV file, which is great. But then I load it into Kino, and it ends up having to like re-encode it. And I don't even understand all of it, but I think that what it's doing is it's like playing the video internally and re-encoding it, kind of like a photocopy of a photocopy. My sense is that it's going to lose a little bit of quality, which is probably not a big, big deal since it is for broadcast over the internet. I wasn't overly concerned about that. But the first time you read it in, for example, this one file, uh, the, the raw file, I had a, I let it run for a, um, an hour and 39 minutes, which is a lot that I have to cut off the beginning and the end. What happened is when I would bring it into Kino, Kino would do its initial load, reading it in, and it was trying to create a file. It was like 10 gigabytes, okay? From 261 megabyte FLV file, it was creating a 10 gigabyte file for Kino to work with, right? Afterwards, when I would export it into a... Uh, they call it a dual pass flash encoded file. It would bring it right back down again to you know whatever 200 megabytes. But in between, it was like 10 gigabytes. Now, a problem I ran into there is very important that you might want to make a note of this. I have a one terabyte my book external hard drive, and that's where I put that file. The problem is, I mean, that's where I put the FLV file, and that's how I where I where the file was when I opened up Kino to to bring it in, and it kept like crashing, or not crashing, but just like stall, and it would only import like 45 minutes or something of that file. And I couldn't figure out what it was, and then I noticed that the file was 9 gigabytes, and then I remembered, aha, if you ever see anything, any file that's 9 gigabytes, let this reflect your memory, or trigger your memory. If your hard drive is formatted as a FAT32 file system, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just write it down because you can ask somebody about it. If your hard drive is formatted as a FAT32 file system, then that which is like the most universally readable format, it's like an old Windows XP file format. Um, it's great for compatibility with many different, every operating system can read it. The problem is it has a file size limit of nine gigabytes. 
it cannot hold a file bigger than nine gigabytes. So that's what was happening. He was trying to create a file, and at nine gigabytes, boom, it crapped out. So that was the problem. All I had to do was take the original FLV file and bring it down onto my local Ubuntu Linux uh, local hard drive, which is formatted in um, ext3, or on uh, newer versions of Windows, it would be an NTFS partition or hard drive formatted in NTFS um, would also be capable of a file size larger than nine gigabytes. But anyway, running into all these issues, I thought, is this really the best way to do this? You know, to, to have a, a tiny little FLV file, then expand it to a 10 gigabyte file just to trim off the beginning and the end, and then re-encode it again? So there are two issues, at least. One is the time that all that takes. Remembering that you're doing this on a daily basis, I, I have to have it done every day. Right now, I have, this is the fourth show that I've taped that hasn't been uploaded yet. I'm that far behind. That's not good. So, you know, it's, y you can't have a day-long project that you have to do every day. That's not going to work. It has to be something that can be done very quickly and effectively and efficiently every single day by yourself without a staff, for at least for me and my circumstances. So, unless you have a big budget <laughs> and you can hire people, that's different. But, um, so what I thought of is like so simple. And this, like I say, all this may change. I mean, we may end up with a, with a real studio and a lot of staff and who knows, everything will change then. But at this point, I'm trying to make it super, super simple on a shoestring, which might be exactly where you're starting out if you're starting your own web TV show. So that's why I'm hoping this will benefit you as well. We can learn together. But here's the idea I came up with. It's so stupidly simple, really. And that is, when I click start on the... <laughs> I mean, instead of trimming the beginning and the end, hello, when I press start, I'll just press start and say, hello, welcome to the show. And that's it. And then when I press stop, boom, I'm done. And that's the end. So that flash file will be the file that I upload. And that's that. Sounds really simple. Now, I still have to press like six or eight clicks on Ustream to get it to be broadcasting live on Ustream. Um, but I can do that kind of discreetly even while I'm while we're on the show. While I'm talking, while somebody else is talking, I can click a button. I can click it, no problem. You know, again, 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 boom. The live audience is going to see, um, like we can stream it live beforehand and then tell them, okay, right before noon, okay, we're going to start the actual show. We'll come back and it's going to look like you're just joining the show already in progress, but don't worry, you won't have missed more than a minute or so. And they'll, they'll have to understand. The live audience, I think, will understand. But um, meanwhile, the taped version will be perfect without any need for editing or re-encoding or anything. I think it'll be brilliant. That's a really good solution. At least that's my idea for now. But um, the, there's still a couple other things you have to do. Like, um, I'll end up with the FLV version, which is great that I can upload that directly, immediately to YouTube instantly. Like, as quick as it can upload, it'll be on YouTube right away, which is great. Then, on the same Vista, Windows Vista machine, which is our only Windows computer, by the way, we use Ubuntu Linux on every other computer, but because Adobe Flash Media Encoder requires Ubuntu Linux, and this computer is dedicated to nothing but that purpose, um, we, we left Windows Vista on it. So, but anyway, on the same machine where Adobe Flash Media Encoder created that FLV file, which we upload to YouTube, we take that same FLV file and we use this free program. You go to download.com and do a search for Format Factory. I think it's all one word, Format Factory, or just Google it. But it's a freeware program. It's brilliant. You take this Format Factory program, you take that FLV file that we created called Episode 428 or whatever it is, and you just drag that onto the Format Factory. And the format you want to select is all mobile devices. So you convert the FLV file to this thing called all, form it's called all to all mobile devices, like all formats to all mobile devices. And anyway, it creates an MP4 file, but especially encoded MP4 file, which can be um, viewed on any iPhone or any uh, mobile device that plays videos, okay? So you use that specifically for your iTunes video podcast. That will be the video version uh, of the file for the iTunes video podcast, okay? Then, right after that, you take the same file and you code it for 
all to MP3 under the audio thing. You do all to MP3 and you convert the video flash, the what is it called, FLV file to an MP3 audio. Of course, you end up with audio only. So we, basically what you're doing is you're stripping the audio off of it and creating an MP3 file out of it, which is brilliant for the iTunes audio only version of your podcast. So on iTunes, you'll have two podcasts, one that's a video and one that's audio only. And the reason for that is, you know, obviously a lot of people have iPods that don't play video. But they, and, and also some people might just want, they might prefer to listen to the audio only because they don't need to see me talking or us talking, whatever. They can just listen. And the audio quality will sound fantastic. So they can be listening with their earbuds on their morning commute or whatever, when they go biking or wherever, whenever, you know, whenever it's convenient, they can be listening with a very small file size too. It's, it's a really tiny file because audio only. All right. So you end up with three files, the FLV file that came directly out of the Flash Media Encoder, and that one is the one that you go directly up to YouTube with. You end up with the MP4 file, which is the one that came out of Format Factory, converting the FLV file into the All to All Mobile Devices button. And that MP4 file is the iTunes video podcast. And then you end up with the MP3 file, which is the Again, Format Factory conversion of the FLV file to the all to audio MP3 file. That's the one for the iTunes audio only podcast. Did I confuse you? Anyway, <laughs> with these three files, you're done. You upload the FLV to YouTube. You upload the MP4 to uh, archive.org. You, you go to archive.org, create an account, upload it free there and then you take the mp3 file and upload that to archive.org then you take the url for the mp4 file put it into a blog post and take that rss feed and that's the one that feeds your feed burner rss feed which feeds your itunes podcast i know it's getting a little bit technical here and so if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about if you don't you will get we'll, we'll cover that on another technology day on thursdays but it, you know at least you can be doing this on YouTube right away, and you can research more about how to do it on um, as an iTunes podcast. And like I said, eventually we, we will talk a lot more detail about creating audio podcasts and video podcasts, and the easiest way to do that for free. You don't have to pay. There's a lot of services that charge you, you know, anywhere from a little bit to an exorbitant fee monthly to do these things but you can it's all out there and it's absolutely free there's no need to to pay for these services and on Thursdays when we talk about technology that will be one of the the how to's that we go into deep uh, detail about how to create podcasts but um, anyway so that's the idea the point is that it only takes about 10-15 minutes to do those two file conversions and I immediately have those three files to start uploading right away which is brilliant so that w and within an hour of finishing the taping of the show we can absolutely have it um, on you know live we can have it up and out and, out and live so that's the story um, that's where I'm at right now so the, the, it's the the reason for starting it at the beginning and not even having I mean basically it's a no editing policy as I told Ed if we say something we really screw up and we say something we shouldn't have said then we either have to make the decision to put it out there anyway or scrap the show and start over because we're on such a no editing uh, basis to get it out in time that that's what's necessary because we can't afford that time daily to do the video editing and not to mention the you know re-encoding it again and all the file space issues and I mean it's just a big huge project it's just not worth it it's really not worth it and eventually in the future when we have more staff and more machines and we get fancier and all that we can always add on these fancy production effects and stuff that can always be done later but for me right now doing it daily is the most important thing of all just just do it as Nike would say um, all right, so that's it for today. We're going to talk, tomorrow is, uh, what, Thursday, <laughs> so tomorrow's technology, personal technology day, and we'll see. If we have panelists, um, then we'll have them here, either here live or on Skype, and we'll talk technology issues. I've got tons of technology issues to talk about, obviously, and um, if not, we'll, I'll give you an update of where we're at with, with all of this stuff. 
So if you'd like to be a guest co-host, which I call panelist, um, to talk about any of these particular categories, whether it's money things, um, body, health, fitness, nutrition, technology, um, wait, money, body, love is personal, you know, relationships, dating, and all that, um, technology, celebrity, or spirit, spiritual issues and things like that, get a hold of me. Bruce Wagner on Twitter, twitter.com slash Bruce Wagner, all one word, or Bruce at BruceWagner.com, or just simply go to BruceWagner.com and click on Contact Me or my Twitter there and uh, be in touch with me. Give me feedback. Tell me your thoughts. What am I missing? What 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 what, what, are, what are the shortcuts that are, are obvious that I'm missing or um, suggestions or ideas or concepts or ideas for guests or some celebrity that you'd love to see us interview or topics we should talk about? Or um, if you would like to be on camera, with all you need is a laptop or PC with a webcam. You can download Skype at Skype.com, and you can be on here with us, too. Join us. And at the very least, remember to go to BruceWagner.com and watch live, if you can, at 12 noon Eastern Time every day, Monday through Saturday. And then the Spanish-language version is going to be on Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So spread the word about that to the Spanish-speaking world. All right, thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you soon. Take care.